<laughs> okay, how we doing? Happy Friday. Yay. Yay. I hope the salads are delicious. Um, we have a very exciting program here today. I've already heard so many compliments about our speaker, and I can already tell from interacting with him for three minutes that he is going to be awesome today. So I'm very excited to introduce Dr. Stephen Grafe. He's a licensed counseling psychologist in Ohio, specializing in sport, performance, and common psychological illnesses, such as depression, anxiety, and adjustment. He received his bachelor's degree in psychology from Ohio State University, where he was also a member of the 2002 National Championship football team. So that's a fun fact to ask him about after the program. Um, he went on to complete both his master's and doctoral degrees in counseling psychology at the University of Akron. Dr. Grafe works primarily with OSU student athletes and collaborates with other campus resources to ensure consistent and quality care throughout OSU and the greater Columbus communities. In addition, he's owner and founder of Mind Mindurance. Am I pronouncing that okay? All right, an online sport and counseling psychology practice. A former student athlete himself, Dr. Grafe recognizes the important role that psychology has in sport and performance, as well as in mental and physical well-being, and looks forward to sharing his passion and expertise with you today. So please give Dr. Grafe a warm round of applause. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Is this, is this thing on? Can you guys hear it? Oh, now, there it is. Where's my man, the AV guy? I love it. Getting me dialed in. Um, yeah, so the whole national championship thing. So you might be looking up and you're like, Steve, Grafe, Grafe, I'm like a huge Buckeye fan, and I don't recognize that dude's name. Um, and there's good reason for that, because over the course of my four years as an Ohio State football player, um, I played two plays. So in uh, the 2002 season, we played Kent State, and we were up by about 45 points with 30 seconds left, and Coach Jim Haycock was like, Grafe, get your ass in there. And so that was, that was my opportunity to... Um, play football for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The majority of the time I was keeping the team GPA up and pretending to be the other team's defense that we were playing that week. Uh, but nevertheless, made it out unscathed, got myself the ring, and now I'm able to serve the student athletes here at Ohio State um, in a capacity that I think is often uh, overlooked, uh, potentially undertrained, and that being stress management and performance enhancement, so being able to leverage the mental aspect of performance. And I think today's talk, discussion, really speaks to that. Because though I work with athletes and I consider myself a sports psychologist, I am trained as a counseling psychologist. And what a counseling psychologist means compared to like a clinical psychologist is as a counseling psychologist, I'm trained to work with what we call the worried well. Basically, us sitting in this room. Um, not the individuals that you might watch in like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest or something along those lines, right? Um, which there's an entire population of people and those services are incredible. But for me, the satisfaction that I get is interacting with individuals like ourselves that life just throws things on our lap sometimes, don't they? Right? Don't they? And some more than others, you're like, oh my gosh, Steve, you are preaching to the choir right now. Right? And if that was 2017 up there, which is what it was, you would definitely want to be giving the star finger to 2017. Right? Thank God. Ryan Sequest, I was going to say Dick Clark, but I didn't want to sound like I wasn't in touch. Right? <laughs> but Ryan Seacrest dropped the ball, and you're like, all right, here we go. Time to start fresh. And so I'm assuming you all are hoping to start as fresh as those salads that you're chowing down. And by all means, please do, because you've got to nourish the body, to nourish the mind, and then nourish your life. So New Year's resolutions, we want to make these things uh, a thing of the past, all right? And so I love having this talk because we don't want another year to get away from us, all right? And I think when we hear the word resolution, we get all scared, we get nervous, we get the butterflies in our stomachs, we think about all these years past where we set resolutions for ourselves and what happens? Nothing. 
nothing happened because we set up these huge expectations. So the goal today is to give you, there's going to be a lot of information kind of flying at you. So if you only take a little bit, what we're asking for is just a 1% growth. Right? We're not asking crazy. You don't necessarily have to go out and skydive and run an ultra marathon and swim with the sharks, though you can, right? Maybe you take these things and you're like shark man all of a sudden or woman, okay? But we just want a little bit of growth, and hopefully as a result of this talk today, we'll be able to achieve that. And if you're able to get some tip strategies to be able to cultivate that a little bit more for yourself, would that be a good 40, 45 minutes well spent? Would that be a good 40, 45 minutes well spent? Yeah, well, in that case, let's get going. This is staggering to me, though it's not surprising because you're all in this room and this is something you either are interested in or yourself has some trouble with. 45% of individuals or 45% of people make resolutions. Okay? So it's 45 is the percentage of individuals that make resolutions. So the good thing is if you're in that 55% that really don't, make resolutions, then good for you. Because you're really not worried about whether you accomplish the resolution or not if you haven't made it. <coughs> kind of leverage your bet. Well, what did you do last year? Well, nothing. Well, didn't you set any resolutions? Well, no. Oh. <laughs> so I sleep easy at night because I didn't do anything. <laughs> of that 45%, eight, not eight people, though that would be a pretty wild, a is the percentage of individuals that actually achieve their resolutions. Oh, what the hell? Who's part of that 37%? That's probably not right math, right? Because of 45, right? But who's part of the other 37% that like sets them? Yeah, and we're strong for like two and a half weeks, you know, and then we got to go into the oil change instead of going to the gym, and then that just derails, right? Thanks, Midas Touch. You've, boom, made me lazy the rest of the year, right? That's the Midas Touch. So the struggle is real. This stuff is hard. It's hard work getting better. It's hard work setting and finishing resolutions. It's hard. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the data, all right? So we want to relabel this concept of resolution. So if you look into our buddy Webster, this is what resolution is, a firm decision to do or not do something. You like that? A firm decision. I'm going to do this versus I'm going to do this. Right? You're, it's a firm decision. But when we hear the word resolution, our society, our context has created all of this baggage behind that resolution. But really, if you think about a resolution, all it is, is a goal. Resolution is just a sexy word for a goal. It's goal on the red carpet, right? It's goal on the Victoria's Secret fashion show, OK? <laughs> it's just a sexy word for a goal. That's all it is, because a goal is a decision to do something. So we might have a goal to pick up the mail. We might have a goal to check our Tinder account. We might have a goal to get a raise, right? We have goals all the time. But the moment you call it a resolution, oh, well, I can't do that. That's too much pressure, this whole January 1st thing. But don't worry. Don't worry. There used to be a uh, great homeless man on North High Street, and it was a high street rapper. And he would always say, help is on the way. Right? Don't worry, help is on the way. And one of my favorite ones, actually, from the High Street Rapper, I used to bar, uh, bounce at this uh, bar called uh, the, uh, the Spot Bar. And one, I drove a Jeep Wrangler. And I walked out one day, and I walked to the Jeep, my Jeep Wrangler. And I realized I had a black Jeep Wrangler. I tried to get into the Jeep Wrangler, the black Jeep Wrangler. And I realized, oh, that's not my Jeep Wrangler. My Jeep Wrangler is over here. So I went and I got my Jeep Wrangler, and on the process, he goes, <laughs> first and 10, went to the wrong Jeep again. Help is on the way. <laughs> so that one's for you, high, high, street, high street rapper. So the struggle is real, all right? Resolution is just a sexy word for a goal. So what gets in the way, or what creates this 45 and 8? What creates this, first off, I don't even want to set a resolution, and then if I do, 
I'm not accomplishing it. What creates that? Well, all of this, right? We're too distracted. You got a lot going on. We do. It's crazy. And am I biased? I don't think our prefrontal cortexes have evolved quickly enough in the past 30 years to manage all the bullshit we got to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we had, I want your nutrition mix, all right, your spark, right, or Advocare thing that you got rocking and rolling. Because for me, it's too much, too doubtful, right? So maybe it's not too much, but we're just listening to all these societal messages that we can't, we shouldn't, we won't, we never have, we won't again, right? Those negative thoughts, too vague, right? I want to be fit. <laughs> yeah, you do? I want you to be specific. <laughs> with me? So too broad also goes with along those lines. I want to travel. Well, where, right? You can go down to 7-Eleven and technically you could put that in Expedia and give it a review and you've traveled. <laughs> Or you can go to Thailand and wrestle tigers and drink snake's blood and have yourself some bad tie, right? It's a different travel, but it's travel. What's your travel mean? Too many, so that, oh, I'm an idea guy, right? Comes with a man bun. The longer your hair, the more ideas you have, the more you dream, right? So, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn to surf. I'm going to learn to play guitar. I'm going to do a one-man musical. I'm going to grow my business, right? I'm going to actually do a good job at work. I'm going to answer an email, right? So all of these things can become incredibly distracting if we have too many of them. Of course, we become too busy. It goes along with too distracted. And sometimes we just really shoot for something that can potentially be too big, right? I want to go to the moon with Lance Bass. Like, so, man, baby steps. You got to make it to NASA first. I don't think they exist anymore. I think that, well, they just stopped the shuttle program. So, but why do we care? Why are we having this talk? Well, the reality is, what's at stake if we don't do something? If we don't increase or level up our ability to start maintaining and meeting and establishing our goals, we're not going to be able to go from point A to point B. Now, B doesn't need to be this large, really super big, sexy type of thing. It's just growing. And I contend that if we grow and we're in the pursuit of something, that's going to have us feel happier. It's a concept of pursuit, not perfection. Pursuit, not perfection. So we want to grow. And if we're not growing, we're either going to be sad about it. Right? I'm not accomplishing anything. I never do anything. Well, Steve gets to go on these cool trips, and I'm not doing nothing. Right? We get sad. Or we get angry and resentful towards ourselves because each year is just another trip around the sun where we're not living the life that we want to live. And folks, I'm a psychologist. I don't contend to be any more. But as far as I know, we get one go around in this thing. Okay, and I'm sure, and I'm open to any other beliefs that indicate otherwise. But as far as I know, based on the data that I have just like right in front of me, I know that I get one. So I don't want to stand, hopefully, in front of a mirror at 75 years old and say, oh, damn it. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do the goals that I set out for myself. Because we're all capable of accomplishing the goals that we set out for ourselves. Why? Because you have a head, you have a heart, and you have yourselves. That's all you need. You don't need a PhD, you don't need an MD, you don't need an OPP, right? Like, you need yourself. You know what you need? You just need DNA. <laughs> so I stand here in front of you today and say, enough is enough, right? Enough is enough? Yeah, enough is enough. But enough is enough is not enough. Because we need tools, strategies to be able to, that's what I think is the hang up with a lot of us. We set these resolutions, we talk about them on Facebook, and then they're, they, they, they vanish. Like the, the, uh, the goal fairy, the resolution fairy, you, like, you leave your resolution underneath your pillow, and then the next day, the fairy takes it. And you're like, where'd my resolution go? At least leave me a quarter. And you're like, no, pal, I'm the resolution fairy, not the tooth fairy. I'm not leaving you. <laughs> Figure it out. So we need some tools. So... 
I'm an acronym guy. I have an acronym tattooed on my lower abdomen in reverse. So when I take a mirror selfie in the morning, it actually comes out correctly. <laughs> Just have an acronym today, and today is an acronym. Past is an acronym. This is actually true. Where we want to plan and prepare, we want to arrange our environment, we want to stick to one thing, we want to make it too easy to fail. These are four elements, right? We're going to deep dive into these elements as far as how to apply it in a bit of a process, in a bit of a model. But even if you don't take much away from that part, which is coming, this is a good overall framework to keep in mind. We're leveling up. I don't expect you to go and self-publish a book on Amazon about getting goals done and crushing resolutions. All we want you to do is just stay after it a little longer than what you have been. Because if you leave here expecting perfection, like, oh, well, now I have every single tool and strategy I need to kick the world's ass, you're going <laughs> to fall short. It's going to be problematic. This is a process. It's an ongoing process of mastery. I love that why on the end of mastery because it means it's ongoing pursuit until you take your very last breath. We're never done until we're done. Mastery. So utilizing these elements, these frameworks, I think will keep you on the path to leveling up a little bit. Not prop, Steve Graf is never probably going to be like Navy SEAL level commitment to accomplish, setting and accomplishing goals. Like, I get that. I'm not trying to be Jocko Willis, right, of extreme ownership. I'm just trying to be Steve Graf and getting a little bit better every single day, right? And you're all trying to be you all, just getting a little bit better every single day. These elements help remind us of that. So, talked them up enough. Let's hear what they are. So first off, I love it. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail. <sighs> you know, it's a great adventure when you don't have any destination in mind. Trust me, I've had some incredible evenings that led, that came from zero agenda. And I'm sure we could all share some stories about that as well. And there'd be some laughs, maybe some tears, and hopefully a lot of smiles. But that can happen. But when it comes to self-growth in a more consistent level, we got to prepare. Steve, you're going to be a counseling psychologist. OK, great. What do I need to do? What, yeah, yeah, you just got you kind of have to figure it out. What, you, like, what do you mean? What, like, is there a book I can read or a curriculum? Well, I mean, that would kind of defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? You got to kind of like wing it and figure it out. And when you figure it out, then you become a counseling psychologist. No, it doesn't work that way. And thank goodness, like I went into a program. We all probably went into some type of a program where there were steps and checks and balances and things that we knew that we had to do. And by doing these particular things, then it accomplished the goal that we wanted to accomplish, which was getting our particular education. It's as simple as taking and getting directions from Surrey. Right? Where are you going on vacation? California. Surrey, take me to California. Like routing, California, and you probably just go to the capital. Right? But that might not get you in the right direction if you just kind of wing it. So we want to prepare. The way that we do that is, again, just being deliberate in what is your it, Okay, it being your goal. Why, this is huge, why do I want it? This is a motivational fuel. If you don't have some motivational reason for why you're doing something, whew, see ya. See ya, goal. You gotta feel it. You gotta, you gotta kinda want it. And if you don't, we're gonna have to leverage some other resources, which we'll talk about here in a moment, on how to kinda work through. But, you know, why are we doing things that we don't ultimately wanna do? Again, if we get one shot at this thing, <laughs> I don't want to spend my time doing stuff that I don't want to do. And I feel like for many of us, that ratio is too far in the direction of things that we really don't want to do. And occasionally, we get that little McDonald's cheat meal on the way home that is our little moment of nirvana and bliss, that it's like, this is for me. I'm even taking the toy. <laughs> Why do you want it? Why is it important to you? 
and then how will I get it? And then the second half of this, this how will you get it, will become a bit more specific for you. And again, you don't have to do these things perfect. You just have to do these things. You don't have to do all these things. Just do some of these things. Because right now, frankly, we're not doing any of these things. All we're saying is, I'm going to get healthy this year. So you pay 75 bucks to Lifetime Fitness. They're like, do you want your body metrics? You got to get your body metrics so we have a baseline of where you're going to go when you're fit. Oh, sure, yeah, I'll do the body metrics. This is great. Okay, well, you, you know, you, you got some here, right? We'll give you these numbers, and with these numbers, now you're going to start to crush it. Like, okay. Boy, all these people around here are really intimidating. Yeah, I know, but you're going to look like them here on the treadmill. <laughs> okay? So we need to be able to work through all these barriers, all these things, and this is a starting point for that. Arranging our environment. We're going to come back to this as well. This is an important concept. You can arrange your environment in a way that's going to help you create your goals and accomplish your goals or resolutions, or you can create an environment that disrupts them, that serves as obstacles to them, and sabotages them. Okay? The way that we arrange our environment is, again, we have this kind of concept of what do you need to do so when you've identified the steps, which we're going to talk about here in a moment, what do I need to do? You can identify what is the environmental circumstances that are going to help me to accomplish these things. And that'll become a little more clearer when I get to this second part. When is the best time to do it? So when it comes to kind of this exercise thing, if you're like, oh, if you're somebody that wakes up at 8 in the morning, you're like, I'm going to start exercising at 5.30. That might not be the best time to do it. Like, have you ever exercised at 5.30? No. Have you ever got up at 5.30? No. Have you gone to bed at 5.30? Yeah. So we want to think through some of these things because we set ourselves up for failure. I want to take a class. When does it occur? It's on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the middle of the work day. Boss going to be okay? Like, can you figure that out? Oh, I don't know. It might not work. Well, okay, then that might not be the best time to do it. Maybe we got to figure it out. Maybe it's online. Maybe, we, you know, so we got to think through these things. And the thing is, once again, we don't. We don't. Like, I'm going to get physically fit, and then that's the end of it. So you go to a gym, and you, like, slug your way through a quick workout. You shower real quick. You're sweating your ass off all the way back to work. Right, you haven't ate yet, so now you're starving and you're cranky and you're like, oh my God, I got up early. Man, exercise stinks. And guess what? You don't go back for day two. Been there, done that. Got the lifetime membership. Who are the best people to help? We don't have to do this on our own. We don't have to do this on our own. Okay? I uh, signed up for improv classes last year. And rather than me just putting up a mirror and reading a book on improv exercises, like, oh, hey, man, what are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm chopping wood. Oh, my gosh, hey, where'd you get all that firewood from? Right? Like, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I contacted an individual that puts on improv classes, and so then I didn't have to think about it. If I wanted to do improv, all I had to do was throw money at it and show up to the fun Funny Bone on Sunday mornings. That's all I had to do, show up. If I don't, guess what? J.P. Morgan Chase is going to be like, huh, you're just throwing $200 out the window? I'm like, J.P., you know I do that often. And in this case, <laughs> you're right, OK? The accountability is a little bit better than having a little bit of more night out, night out, all right? I understand. So finding people to help you do it, and then where is the best place to do it at? So for instance, if you're trying to get fit, but you're kind of easing into this whole process, going like, I'm going to like fly a personal jet out to the Gold's Gym in LA. That'll be a great place. I'll be motivated by all these people with their hard bodies and tan skin and milkshakes. And you're going to get there, and you're going to be like, oh, well, how do I get the money of a private jet? I should just hire a private person, trainer. But you've got to think about, where's the best place for me to accomplish this? All right, and this will come up a bit more. Stick to one thing. So this is for the dreamers in the group. If you try to chase 15 rabbits, how many do you catch? Rhymes with hero, but it's zero. All right? Because you, you can't concentrate on chasing 15 rabbits, can you? 
No. Even if you're a professional rabbit chaser, you can't. I've worked with a few of those. So how do you stick to one thing? There's kind of three thought-provoking questions you can ask yourself. What is a keystone behavior? A keystone behavior is something that if you do, it just sets, sets in motion a really solid rest of the day. So for me, it, and often for a lot of people, it's, uh, it's, it's exercise, right? Getting exercise going is kind of a keystone behavior. For others, it might be prayer. For others, it might be just a morning meditation of, of some, some daily devotional or reading something. But it's, what do we think is going to, when you do this, boy, is it an anchor for you to catapult yourself into other domains of your life. Does that make sense? So a really important behavior for you that you're trying to start. The second one's kind of neat. If you died in a week, if you knew you were going to die in two months, what would be that thing that you would really have kind of the most regret of not at least giving a shot and working towards? Like, oh, I always wanted to write a book, right? I just, I always wanted to write a book, okay? So that would be something that, well, right, maybe now is the time that this year I'm going to focus on writing a book. It could be a terrible book. But I suppose anything over, like, two pages with the title goes from an essay to a book. And these days, now there's websites that are like the 30-day book challenge and stuff that you can sign up for. So what is that dying need? What is that dying need? Bless you. And then the final one, the most impact. And the way that I view this, it's kind of like, what, what is that one thing that would offer um, like the most bang for the buck, so to speak? Not to put it crudely, but <clears throat> I, was, I just got back actually on Monday from Mexico. I was in Mexico for two weeks. And the first week, I knew that I wanted to take surfing lessons. So I had never surfed before. That's probably <laughs> apparently obvious, um, growing in, up in Ohio. So I wanted to take surf lessons, but I also enjoy traveling. So by doing surf lessons in Puerto Escondido, Mexico, it accomplished a great deal of impact in the fact that I was able to go to a new place in Mexico I had not been to before, and I was able to accomplish surf lessons, and I was able to get away from work for a while. <laughs> so that was a lot of impact, right? So what is that one behavior, or one, that one habit, or that one resolution that if you do this, it'll accomplish a lot of other things for you as well? Exercise also serves this. So uh, if I exercise, I'm going to be more physically fit to sign up for this trail run that my work friends are doing. And then I can also sign up for this uh, uh, running group, which then taps me into the social community. See? So that one little thing of signing up for a running club or choosing to run this particular race can come with it all of these other variables, all these other byproducts. So what is that most impactful goal? Does that make sense? Or saving more money, right? That might be a resolution or a goal. Saving more money allows you to spend more money on other things that you enjoy doing. So stick to one thing. And then finally, this is uh, this is this 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 needs like taught in children's classes. <sighs> the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We've heard that before. And all habits and resolutions are is these neural connections that get created that make it easier to do something over time. Setting and accomplishing goals, again, is not this mystical like universe kind of putting gold dust on our foreheads and like we accomplish these goals, right? It's the way we set a goal is through our prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex doing its job. And then by engaging in that goal over and over and over again, it takes that like foggy, foresty concept of a goal, and you walk down it once, you see a path, you walk down it again, that grass turns to dirt, you decide, hey, we're using this path quite a bit, let's throw down some gravel. After you throw down some gravel, now you're throwing down some asphalt, then that asphalt turns into concrete, one lane, two lane, three lane, four lane, the next thing you get, no, you have yourself a really high, efficient highway of a goal. 
And the only thing that happened was just those neural connections getting strengthened and strengthened and strengthened. How do you do those neural connections over time? You just do something every single day. We're close to every single day. You don't learn Spanish by going to a weekend retreat on a Saturday and speaking Spanish for three hours and then leaving it for the rest of the year. It doesn't work that way. No knowledge works that way. No motor skill works that way. Okay? We learned to ride a bike because we hammered at it. We fell. We hammered at it. We fell. We took one pedal, and then maybe we took two pedals. And then we had the training wheels. And then, you see? So it built up that motor memory. Same thing applies to everything else. So this concept of starting small, if you start off with the smallest, smallest, smallest domino, it can knock over a domino a little larger, a little larger, a little larger, a little larger, until the next thing you know, you're knocking over some pretty huge dominoes. But if we start here, guess what's going to happen? Fail, fail, fail. Right? We see it all the time. We try, OK, I'm going to get physically fit. I'm going to go out for a five-mile run. Right? And then you realize that was a bad idea. You give yourself shin splints, and you're right back to square one, not exercising. Whereas if you literally say, I'm going to walk a quarter mile today, one lap around the track, you do that, guess what? You just walked through that grassy field one time. The next day, I'm going to do that 0.25 again. And you walked down that grassy field again. You want to make it so easy, it's impossible to fail. Even if that means getting up one morning and doing a single push-up. Because what that does is it boop, makes the brain dance. Oh, boop, we're doing something different today. Boop, boop, we did something different two days in a row. Boop, 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 did something different three days in a row. Are you with me? It's neurological. It's not fairy dust. It's neurological. All habits are. We don't think about brushing our teeth because that neural pathway is so locked in. You try brushing your teeth with the opposite hand, there's suds and everything. <laughs> Just can't quite figure this out, right? Neurological. You make it too easy to fail, you hammer those down. Keep, that's an important one to keep in mind. OK. Cool? So we use the past. Past are these conceptual elements that when it comes time for you to set a revolution, a goal, comes time for you to set a goal, keep those past things in mind. Plan and prepare, arrange your environment, stick to one thing, make it too easy to fail. Now, though, there is a process that I think allows us to put some of these things a bit more into practice, into application, which I also think is important. And I also recognize that we are getting, over, go, getting to our time, so we're going to dance. All right? Sometimes we're able to dance for a long time, and sometimes we just got to dance very quickly and keep it rolling. So we're going to keep it rolling. Um, I'm going to go over these, so this will save some time. Some of them were incredibly uncreative, but when you're dealing with a U, just sometimes it's hard. When you're dealing with two U's, it becomes almost impossible. So as a result, U out there, and even for the acronym king, gets unravel and uncover. I apologize in advance for that lack of creativity. It'll be my resolution this year that I don't meet. So, F. The F in future stands for focus in. So you got to name that goal. That goes back to the plan and prepare. Name the goal. What is it that you want to accomplish? Is it that keystone behavior? Is that that dying need? Is it something that's the most impactful for you? What is it? Name it. Put it down on paper, a vision board, tattoo it on your forehead, whatever. Do a crop circle of it, whatever you like doing. Name the goal. Figure it out. Because if you have all these other things kind of floating around in your head, you got to stick to that one thing. What is that goal going to be? This does not have to be perfect. We just got to level up. Right? This part does not have to be perfect. But we're not doing this at all right now. So when it comes to a goal, we want to be able to unravel the steps to accomplish the goal. What does this entail? Getting fit, what does that entail? Running a marathon, what does that entail? Eating healthier, what does that entail? Taking improv classes, what does that entail? Writing a book, what does that entail? Being better in my marriage or relationship, what does that entail? Traveling more, what does that entail? What does that entail? What does that entail? What does that entail? This is the process in which we're able to break this down. 
to identify kind of the larger elements that create that goal. But then once we create those larger elements, what are those really small behaviors, those small little its, those small little steps that if we do those things on a day-to-day -day basis, then this element gets created. And if this element gets created, then over time, our goal gets satisfied. Does that make sense? Here's an example. Last year, I turned 35, the last November, la not I turned 36, but last November I turned 35, and I decided I'm going to do something. I was kind of on the couch. I need to do something. I've been semi-physically active, but um, you know, football season just kind of, it gets to you. So I decided I'm going to turn 35. I'm going to find a 35-mile race. Okay, great idea, Steve. Um, there are no 35-mile races except for one in Santa Barbara, California, that also, if you read like the small print before you pay for the sign-up, is one of the most challenging ultra-marathons like, out there-ish. And the fact that there's 12,000 feet of elevation change over the course of 35 miles. So essentially, if you're doing kind of the, if you're a cartographer, which I'm sure OSU hires. <laughs> going up and down, up and down, up and down for 17.5, and then up and down on that same pathway back. So obviously, having had no ultra marathon experience previously, in fact, haven't ran a marathon previously, I've only done a, a half uh, Ironman and a, and a half uh, marathon, I had to break it down. So what do I break it down? The way I looked at it, the holy trinity of ultra marathons was long runs, doing some yoga, and hill slash speed work, because it was going to be really important for me to be fast if, uh, if I was going to come in first place. <laughs> so this, this was a really critical component that you'll probably see in a little bit didn't get as recognized over time. But nevertheless, OK, so what am I doing? So I have this distance that I need to do. I have hot yoga t two times a week and treadmill. So now we're getting somewhere. Even if I don't end up doing all of this in its entirety, we're getting somewhere. Because now this ultra marathon doesn't seem like this fictitious being from the future. It actually looks like something I can do every day. So you're saying, I just need to run a little bit each day, you know, get in maybe a class or two of hot yoga, all right, and walk on an incline? OK, that seems a little bit more manageable. Are you with me? Kind of breaking it down. Next piece, after you unravel the steps, is to today the steps. That's awful, I know. But like, so what does that mean, today the steps? Well, take what you just did with the steps, and you're going to put them into each today's. I don't use the acronym. I just created it because it's fun. I use the, the meat. So today the steps. So these things that you've created these ingredients, now we actually want to place them in a day-by-day -day monthly calendar. This is so powerful. This is so powerful, and we're going to get to why here in a, in, a, in a couple minutes. Ultra marathon is starting to look a lot more attainable, isn't it? Much more, because now I can see it. I can see the meat and potatoes of it. I know what I'm up against. And actually, if I just look at Monday week one, it's not that much. It's just steak sauce. This is what steak sauce looks like when there's real stuff in it, real ingredients. So here's the ideal, right? This is like if everything goes as planned. And again, now this really makes ultra marathon seem achievable. Why? Because I got so much good stuff going on. I know what day I'm doing. Yoga, I'm starting off making things too easy to fail. I'm running four half miles. I'm not, not even a half mile, a quarter mile. I'm running four laps around the track, and I'm done for the day. Done for the day. Bro, you're running an ultra marathon, and you're done for the day after running a mile, not even in succession? Yeah, I'm done for the day. Why? Because if I start over here, I'll be in the Ross Hart Hospital <laughs> using my catastrophe insurance. See what I mean? It's coming alive now, all because we took the extra time to today the steps. 
Uncovering your needs. Now, goals require tools, require passports, require bags, requires equipment, requires things and people and places that we need in order to accomplish our goals. But we don't always think those things through either. I want to start skiing more. OK, well, do you have skis? No. Do you want to rent them each time? How much are they? Well, like 30. Ooh. I didn't think that through. Maybe I should buy them. Oh, maybe you should buy boots, right? So like, what do you need? What are the products, people, and processes that you need to make your goal happen? So for the ultra marathon, what are the products? You know, compared to other sports, um, it's not terrible. But shoes, running clothes, a distance rotch that you spent a lot of money for and then eventually fell off in the ocean when you were taking surfing lessons. <laughs> But you were smart and got travel insurance before you went. <laughs> Not going to pull one over on Doc. These are the products. What are the people? OK, so I chatted with the OSU sports uh, nutritionist. And we talked a little bit about a ketogenic diet. And um, so I was kind of intrigued by that. And so tried that. So these are people that I, that I referenced. And then again, these processes. All right, so I have to sign up for regular yoga class, maybe take a running shop to work on my form, um, and then <laughs> The whole waking up earlier thing, which I did eventually kind of kind of get to. So being deliberate about this. What are you going to need to accomplish your goal? If you go on a vacation, you need to pack certain things in your luggage. If you're going on any expedition, any adventure, you need things that are going to support that journey, correct? And a goal is like little miniature journeys. They really are. You can even view them that way if it excites you a little bit more, if that gets you going, you and your goals. So what's important, but also where? So now that we have all of these things, now that we have kind of these ideas of what we're going to be doing each day, where is that going to occur? You may have other environments and locations in you, right? Or based on your thing, you might have the workout facility there. You might have, but at home, I wanted to ready my space by doing the following things at home. And by readying your space, what this does is it creates the likelihood for success. It creates an environment of success. So at home, I put my alarm clock across my room. You want to get up, like out of bed, find an obnoxious song, put it on your cell phone, put the cell phone about 20 feet away from your bed, and assuming you don't have go-go gadget arms, it's going to force you to get up out of bed and pick up your phone and turn it off, or at least hit the snooze. Now, but you're out of bed. And there are days that you might go right back into bed. But as long as you get out of bed, it increases the likelihood that you're going to stay out of bed. We're leveling up. We're not being perfect. So if we have our phones right next to our pillows, it becomes a lot easier to turn off the Rick rule OK? Compared to if never going to keep you up is all the way over there. Oh, God, i got to turn that off. <laughs> Maybe it's a motivational saying on the mirror. All right, what about at work? Right? What can you have at work to promote? So for me, I do a lot of work at the coffee shop. So I decided I was going to walk to the coffee shop, and that was going to help me achieve some of my goals as well. And I kept a towel in my car. So readying your space, putting your workout equipment by the door, right? Instead of having all these, like, if you're trying to lose weight or whatever, all these, like, uh, not so healthy foods in your house isn't helping you. You got to get that stuff out and give it to Steve, and then you can start. All right? It's those types of things. Right? It's those types of things. Readying your space, if you're trying to save money, looking through the subscriptions that you have. Right? Where's my monthly bill? Like, what am I? I'm still paying Netflix. I never watch it. Spotify is ten dollars, and I've been offline for the past two years. Right? Can't even listen to it on the flight. Maybe I'm wasting money that I, so readying your space. You with me? And this doesn't have to be perfect. Guess what? You're going to leave things out. Awesome. But you're not doing any of this right now. Because I wasn't. And sometimes, frankly, I still don't. But that's the process. OK? Then we just engage in our goals. This is where the magic happens. Because if I woke up in the morning having ultra marathon in my head, snooze. I 
if I have to think at all about what it is that I have to do that particular day to accomplish the goal, it's too much energy. It just is. We're lazy people. As much as we want to grow as human beings, we're lazy. We would like to grow, but can we at least be in like a recliner when we do that? Right? Leaned back listening to an audio book. But if I wake up in the morning and all I got to do is I know that I'm doing this and that's it and I know where I'm doing it, where my exercise equipment is, where my clothes are at, the place that I'm going to do it, the route that I take, the time that I make it happen, that's easy. That's, now it's super easy. It's all the stuff beforehand that's tough. Does that make sense? Now it's easy. Er, a lot easier. Having this down and knowing what you're setting yourself up for every day. That's why like, people do the whole food prep. You do the food prep. If you can do the food prep on the Sunday and create all the food that you're going to eat that week, if like, you're dedicated to that and can sustain that for as long as you want to, I give people credit that's able to sustain that forever. But if you're able to sustain that even for a little bit, that's leveling up. Why? Because I don't, you don't have to worry about what you're having for breakfast. You don't have to worry about what you're having for lunch. It's there. It's made. You just got to make sure you remember it. And in this weather, you can keep it in your car so you don't have to use your fridge. There's no chance of forgetting it. With me? Cool. So you today the steps, where did we end up with? So we engage our goals. The only thing is engage your goals. It started with an E, so I couldn't say just do it, but that's essentially what we're doing. Waking up or after work or in the middle of work or at the restaurant, whatever it is, this is when you're engaging with your goals. You're doing them, doing them, doing them, doing them. And then finally, record your progress. What do we notice about that? About me, what's that? <laughs> yeah, Wednesdays were a bit of a, uh, what did we call it in counseling psychology? Oh, growth edge, right? Because God forbid we hurt your feelings and say you're a shitty therapist right now, but that's what it was, a growth edge. One of your growth edges right now. So this is tracking, right? And so eventually I realized, you know what? Just forget the upper body lift. Forget it. Why beat myself up over it? It's obviously not going like well, <laughs> right? <laughs> but also it's, it's not getting in the way of me doing a lot of these other things, right? So I'm still progressing in stamina and endurance through this process, even without the upper body lift, OK? And my other resolution of like developing a like dad bod was also progressing as a result of not doing the upper body lift, right? So, but what I love about this is it's pursuit, not perfection. Had I not done this, imagine what this like graphic would look like. There'd be a lot more red. It would, it would be empty. I'd have no direction to go. I'd know nothing. But now, you know what? I leveled up. And I don't know what this is as far as percentage-wise. Right? If there's like some beautiful minds out there that are like, boom, it's 75% success rate based on your green, red color scheme. If you got that, it's probably actually not that difficult to figure out. For you all, while I'm talking, it'd be impossible. My head would explode. And I'd have to go to the uh, neuroscience center. Okay? This is huge. It's huge. It's not perfect, it's pursuit. And guess what? Even though there's a lot of red in here, I went from four quarter miles to 14. I went from 20 minutes on an incline to running a uh, 20K, which is, you know, whatever that is. It's like 12 miles, right? From 20 minutes to 12 miles. Why? I, was, I didn't run 12 miles here. I just stuck to the path. And guess what? Physiology did the rest. My neurochemicals, neurotransmitters, neural networks did the rest. Record your progress. Know how you're doing. And what's cool about this is you get to see a streak going. Oh, man, this is awesome. I'm doing really good. Right? So streaks are nice. Um, and it just looks good when everything's kind of together. So having a visual representation of that aesthetically is also pleasing. Even when you know you're not doing something. That actually looks kind of nice, because then I can just disregard it. I can just disregard it. It's not working for me. 
So in summary, it's 45 and 8. What are you going to do? These are the numbers that are stacked up against us. They are. And folks, we're never going to be perfect because we already are. Life is messy. Goals are messy. Resolutions are messy. And when we can wrap our arms around that, that messy is actually pretty beautiful and pretty cool and incredibly 100 percentedly human, then we can allow ourselves to just show up and do the things that we're trying to do each and every day. That's it, man. The human complexity is incredible. It's complicatedly simple. And we do ourselves a lot of favors, but we also hold ourselves back a lot. And my whole contention as I stand in front of you guys right now is show up. Right? Show up. As far as we know, again, we get, we, we get one go at this. How do you want to spend it? How do you want to look back on it? How do you want to engage with it each and every day? And I'm not one of these, live each day like it's your last. No, but like, do something, <laughs> right? Love someone, go somewhere, challenge yourself in something, because we're more than capable of doing that. As long as you make these resolutions a thing of the past, and just start doing what we've done as human beings forever since the dawn of time, just set a goal and crush it. Cool? Cool. Thank you. If you guys need anything, this is uh, uh, my email address. That was me back when I played uh, football at Ohio State. Uh, and um, that number 65 is actually quite appropriate because if you put a 2 in front of it, that was actually my weight at that time, too. <laughs> so, but nevertheless, it's a nice little spring ball pick uh, back when your boy was preparing to get those two plays. So. <laughs> Connect with me, follow me, email me. You got a friend in me. <laughs> yeah, I did. I finished it, actually. Yep, I finished it. No, I finished it uh, third to last, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I was third to last. Uh, I finished it. That's, that's it. That's it. You got to show up. You got to get, you got to have the, uh, the courage to show up to get to the starting line. And say what you need to say, even if your voice is shaking. Right? <laughs>